direct XISF support for ImageMM and SETI Astro Suite Pro, along with some free data for everyone. Welcome to SETI Astro. As always, if you don't have the latest version yet, head over to SETIAstro.com under Astro Program SETI Astro Suite Pro. Current version is 1.3.x. I think we're up to 10 now. Uh, be sure to click download here. Takes you to the GitHub repository or the mirror site is the Google Drive site. As a quick note, if you're gonna be trying to get hardware acceleration, I highly recommend you having Python 3.12. It's gonna be a little bit shorter of a video, uh, but there's two important things I wanted to get out. The first is standardized data that everybody could use. So if you're having problems in SETI Astro Suite and you wanna make sure it's actually SETI Astro Suite that's having a bug or an issue or it's your data or whatever, I am making publicly available my 100 hours on Andromeda, all the raw lights, all the raw flats, all the raw darks. So that way you can take this data and try it in SETI Astro Suite Pro, especially if you're having some kind of a problem and you just want known good working data. The other really great thing is I think it's just a great opportunity to have a bunch of uh, free data out there. Uh, so if you have always wanted to try your hand at post-processing full mono LRGB HSO with a lot of integration time on a target, this is a perfect opportunity for you. You can head over, I'll have the link in the description where you can go ahead and, and download all of it. It's Again, it's 100 hours, so there's like over 880 light frames. A lot of them are 15 minute exposures. And then I have the full suite of flats and darks to go along with them. So I think this is gonna be a great opportunity for a lot of people out there. And importantly, if you're having a problem in SETI S Suite Pro, it gives you some good known data to have to actually try in there to see if it's a bug or what's going on. I think it's just a, a great opportunity for everybody. So I'll have a link in the description again. Everybody can, it'll be free for everyone. You can go ahead and get your hands on the full 100 hours of integration time I had on Andromeda for LRGB HSNO. The other really exciting thing I wanted to talk about is I know a lot of Pix Insight users are going to be coming over to SETI Astro Suite just to try out ImageMM. And before it was kind of a pain because Stacking Suite didn't take uh, XISF formats natively. Uh, you had to do conversions, right? You had to convert the non FITS format over to a FITS. Uh, so I spent a lot of time here and remapped all the code in image integration tab so you can drop your XISF files directly in here. That allows you to either put in your fully calibrated cosmetized images or if you still have your registered images out of PixInsight, you can put your registered images directly into the tree box here and then integrate previously registered images. That way you don't even have to do the alignment. It was already done in PixInsight, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and add light frames. Again, I have the uh, PixInsight output for my Andromeda stuff. And in the registered folder in there, right, PixInsight puts all your, all your stuff in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and load up my hydrogen here for an example. You can see it loaded in the XISF just fine. These are all the registered ones. I wanna enable image MM, which is MFD convolution here. In the wrench icon, uh, under performance, there is a high octane mode or letter rip uh, for those that have a very capable system. Lots of RAM, you know, like a lot of RAM, decent GPU. The high octane mode is not memory managed at all. It's just gonna go full bore, use up all the resources it possibly can in order to process image MM. If you leave this unchecked, it'll be the normal mode where it is memory managed, it is slower, but it's not going to crash out on RAM and a, and a bunch of other things. So make sure you're selecting the right one for your system there. And I'm sure you've already seen some of my previous videos on how to set up your, your clips and your Huber and things like that. You're also gonna want auto star mask and auto noise mapping. And these are already registered, calibrated, cosmetized out of PixInsight. I'm just gonna click integrate previously registered images now. It has to go through them, uh, measure them all. It'll auto select the reference frame that we're gonna help build on and jump right into image MM. During the loading phase, you're gonna see um, 
the XISF is actually loading in now. Uh, you're going to see this at various different por parts, uh, depending on if you're in high octane mode or in the normal integration mode. And then ImageMM is just going to go through the different steps. Even if you have hardware acceleration, there's some steps that are CPU only. So you're not going to see your GPU jump up right away. Specifically around PSF measurements and creating the star and noise map masks. So right here where it's gonna measure all the PSFs and all the images, it's going to create star masks for every single one of the images. And then it also has to create noise map images for every single one of your frames too. So this particular step does take a little bit of time, uh, but just let it go through. You're gonna have a much superior result if you use star masks and noise maps. You're gonna see some text in the stacking log uh, as it's actually building out the masks and maps. And you can see uh, it is multi-threaded, so your numbers probably will look a little weird. They won't necessarily be in numerical order. As your threads finish on your CPU, it just finishes in turn. How much resources and stuff uh, it'll use will definitely be determined by just not only the number of frames you got to, but the size, you can see I'm running some fairly large 8300 by 5600 images through. So just keep that in mind too when you're uh, putting in a bunch a bunch of images for ImageMM. It is, it is more resource intense than just normal integration is. Once it's done going through all the images, building the star masks and noise maps, it goes into calculating the seed image. That's handled a little differently between high octane and normal mode as well. As it moves into the multiplicate multiplicative iterations where it's actually doing the meat and the potatoes of image mm that's now where you're going to see your gpu jump way up as it starts working through the iterations so you're going to just uh, see that come up uh, in normal mode you're going to see more condensed spikes and then the cpu is going to work for a little bit and then you're going to see another spike on the gpu uh, but this is where the heavy lifting of image mm actually happens it's during these iterations all right, and it reached the end. Uh, it says that the image MM was saved. It'll tell you where it was saved to. So let's go ahead and open it up. It'll be in this masters folder. Then here's my image. And again, this is using the registered images from PixInsight. So they're already all aligned and stuff. So I'm just gonna crop out the alignment artifacts. And there we go. This is uh, H alpha data from Andromeda, calibrated and registered in PixInsight, but brought over to SETI Astro Suite Pro to do the actual image MM um, process on it and get those sharper, more detailed masters that uh, you're probably gonna wanna experiment around with. So this is a perfect opportunity, especially if you've saved a bunch of your registered images in PixInsight, or you still just have your calibrated images and wanna load them directly into SETI Astro Suite Pro and image integration to run image MM now, you absolutely can. As a quick reminder, I have that free data out there available for everybody as well. It's a good known baseline of data if you just wanna try SETI Astro Suite Pro with it. And for those of you just wanting to process some mono data, or want to get your feet wet with a bigger data set of LRGB HSO with 100 hours of integration behind it, go ahead and, and grab that data as well. And if you do end up processing Andromeda, shoot me an email or send me a link of the image you ended up creating. I'd love to see it. Please comment, like, and subscribe.